Hi everybody and welcome to part 2 of my LEGO Technic Differential Gearing series. Uh, in this episode I'm going to be presenting some computer generated solutions for finding 1 to N gear ratios where N is prime. So we can think of a differential as having two inputs and one output. So the inputs are the, these two axles and the output is the central barrel that rotates as you turn these axles. And the relationship between those three inputs and outputs is as follows. So if we draw the differential as having input A over here and then the differential kind of barrel in the middle and then input B and input output C then the relationship between A, B and C is simply that C is the average of the rotations of A and B. And what that means we can rearrange this equation and write that 2C equals A plus B which means A is equal to 2C minus B. So what we're trying to do is to find values of C and B that will give us prime values of A. So if we're given A for example that we might want to create like 17 we could use for example C is equal to 9 and B is equal to 1 in which case we get a value of A equal to 17 which is the ratio that we want. Now one of the constraints on the values of B and C is that they have to be multiples of the naturally occurring gear ratios that LEGO provides. So for example uh, in LEGO you can create a um, 1 to 3 gear ratio like this, you can create a 2 to 1, uh, a 5 to 1 and even a 7 to 1. So in this case the 7 to 1 I've had to use 4 gears to create the 7 to 1 between these two points. So we've got uh, the Z28 driving a 20 tooth which gives us a 7 to 5 and then we need a 5 to 1 to convert that back into a 7 to 1. So those are the constraints on B and C which have to find values of B and C that when multiplied together and then related through this equation here back to A will give us the prime value that we're after. So what I did was write a computer program that tried every combination of C and B that met the constraint of them being multiples of the LEGO prime ratios like 2, 3, 5 and 7 and also met the constraint of adding up via this equation here 2C minus B equaling the desired prime ratio that we're after. So I've got the results here for A equals 17. Uh, I've created the printout. And as you can see here at the top left we've got the, the, the ratio that we're after 17 to 1 and the values for C and B that will allow us to make the 17. So for example here again we've got the 9 and the 1. So we've got 2 times 9 take away 1 is 17. The other column that I've got is um, this column here which shows you the minimum number of gears that you'd need to create this particular solution. And it also shows you the, the gearing ratios that you need to create each individual value for B and C. So for example to create 15 you need 5 times 3. If you want 27 you need obviously 3 times 3 times 3 etc etc. Now one thing to note of course is that the number of solutions is not as great as I, as I thought it might be. Um, there are some very interesting ones at the bottom there. We've got very large numbers and at the top we've got pretty much the optimal solution here in terms of being optimal and the number of gears that you might want to use. So obviously we're trying to minimize the number of gears. Um, it doesn't mean that this is necessarily the best solution for your application. For some reason you might want to use some of the other solutions where you might use six gears or seven gears. Depending on physical constraints uh, you might have a limited number of uh, particular gear that you've got available so you're limited in what options you've got in terms of your design. Now one of the other columns I've got as well is what I call the sign gear. Um, with the nature of the gearing ratios that every time you uh, gear one gear onto another one the direction of rotation uh, changes to the opposite. So this gearing ratio from here to here if we rotate clockwise here the other gear will rotate anti-clockwise. Uh, so what that means that in some cases you need an extra gear to get the direction of the rotation correct. Um, so that's what this column is for. So if it's a zero then you don't need that extra gear. If the sign is one uh, then you do. Now in order to work out the number of gears that are used in a particular solution we just look at how many different gearing ratios are being used. So in this case for the second solution we've got the 3x3. Three three. Each of those needs uh, two gears to implement. So we've got 
Um, the three to one uses two gears. We need two of those, so that's four gears. Uh, we need one uh, of the sign gears to reverse the direction. And you also find you always need one gear in practice to connect back onto a central barrel. So in this case, we've got the one, two, three, four, the reversing gear and the uh, connection gear to the barrel, which gives us a total of six gears. Now I have gained some interesting insights into some of these solutions. Uh, one of the things I discovered is that most of the optimal solutions that use the minimum number of gears generally just use the two, three and five gearing ratios available in LEGO and not the seven to one. And obviously the reason for that is, is that uh, the two, three and five just need two gears to implement whereas the seven needs four gears as you can see here. And therefore most of the solutions that are optimal just use the two, three and five. Now there are some exceptions to this uh, general observation. For example here we've got a 421 uh, solution list. Uh, there's about 10 solutions there and in this case the optimal solution that uses just 12 gears which is 5 gears better than the next best solution uh, uses the 7 to 1 ratio rather than just using the 2, 3s and 5s. Uh, so I thought that was interesting. Uh, I've actually built this particular solution over here and probably some of the other insights I've found in actually constructing some of these solutions, especially the more complex ones, is that you're always trying to find ways of putting the gears uh, onto the lift arms in such a way that they meet back at uh, pretty much the starting point, you're sort of going around in a circle. And some of the insights I've made in, in doing this is that, first of all, you're not limited to going around linearly, you, you can go upwards. So in this case here, I've uh, use these um, corner lift arms to, to go up and come round and that allows me to connect back onto the central barrel in such a way uh, that I've actually found the um, minimum number of gears that are used. Uh, the other insight is around connecting back to the central barrel. There's pretty much two ways of doing that. You can either connect on this side using the 16 uh, tooth gear or you can connect on the other side using the 24 tooth and the difference is it's just the spacing of where the axle will connect onto. So in this case it'll be a spacing of two, in this case it's a spacing of three and sometimes they can make the difference from you know making something work or not work. So as I said this is the optimal implementation of the 421 to 1 gearing ratio using a differential. Uh, as you can see on the printout here the optimal solution is just using 12 gears and just counting those we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So again this has been very useful so if you are concerned about trying to find uh, you know the best way of uh, implementing a particular prime number then uh, th these computer generated solutions are, are very useful. Some of the other interesting insights I found uh, was for example that if we look at the solutions for the columns C and B, you'll find that they never have the same gearing ratio in common. So for example, this bottom solution here, on the left here we've got 5s and 2s, on the right we've got 7s and 3s. We don't have both 5s and 5s on both sides, or 2s and 2s on both sides. And the reason for this is, uh, is actually simply mathematical. Uh, if we look back at the equation A equals 2C minus B, now B and C have got a common factor for example F, then we can write this as 2F times uh, whatever C divides into, so there might be C naught, minus F times B naught, where C naught equals C over the factor, which means uh, it divides out, and B naught equals B over the factor. So taking out the common factor would imply that F times 2c0 minus b0 equals a and of course because now a is written as a product of two integers that must mean that a is not prime now of course because a is prime it is not possible for f to be any different than one the other thing i discovered interestingly enough is that not all primes could be created uh, i had the program search pretty much from one upwards uh, going through each of the possible primes and the first one it found that there was no solution was 3,877. After that, 4,139, 5,227, and of course there's many more after that. It doesn't mean these solutions aren't possible, it just means that you have to go to a different uh, differential configuration, uh, probably using two differentials instead of one, and I'll probably cover more of that in my next video. So I hope uh, you really enjoyed this one and, and got something out of it. 
please like and subscribe and at the end of this video I'm just going to show you all the solutions that my program found uh, probably take quite a bit of time but if you're interested you can have a look at those and if you're looking for particular answers you'll find them there see you next time